Psalm 15, the happiness of holiness. Psalm 15, that's where we're going to start. I was up early this morning. God had me at my desk at about 7 o'clock. And I had a scripture, which will probably be the second part of this thought. Um, And Pete preached it today. Pastor Pete preached it about uh, suffering and such like that. And uh, we'll take a look at that, too. That that first verse of scripture he gave me. But um, when you get to Psalm 15, say amen. 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 Let's preach and let's listen and let's have some fun. Amen. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Question. He says, Lord, this is David speaking. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? You know, the Zion, the, the streets of gold, the heaven, the, the heavenly realms. Who, who shall abide there? Are, are we going to abide there? And he has a question. He's going to go on and he's going to tell us who shall. Who shall dwell on thy holy hill? Would you come up onto the holy hill? Would, you, would you, anyone here want to get up to that holy hill? Amen. How many here have ever hiked, done some hiking, and, and had to go up a hill? I see some smiling, and you went up that hill. Wasn't it glad when you achieved that hill, amen? Well, there's coming a day, I'm here to tell you today, amen, that we're going to be climbing a holy hill, amen? Aren't you glad that you're going to be heading there? Amen. <laughs> Verse 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in heart, in his heart, walketh uprightly. How do we walk? How do we do things? How do we, how do we go through life? How do we conduct ourselves at work? How do we conduct ourselves in our neighborhood? How do our, not just this walk, like this is your gate, or this is kind of how you go. I had a horse one time. I was a horse trader. Here I went on a tangent already here. And that horse would walk like this and all of a sudden kick its leg up like that. But that's not the type of walk I'm talking about. I'm talking about your walk, your personal walk with Jesus Christ, your spiritual walk, Amen. So it says, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness. Won't, won't you try to be more righteous, amen? Every morning about 8.30 during the weekdays, I have a Bible study with a friend from Holly, New York. And uh, we talk about that, uh, that pro- Proverbs we talk about. And a lot of times we see righteous, a lot of righteousness. We're to, tr- we're to live as righteously as we possibly can, amen? Amen? Jimmy, in the mirror, live as right as you can. Hallelujah. And speaketh the truth in his heart. What did you just tell the truth, amen? A lot of people, it's easy to half lie it or just say a little bit, you know. But wouldn't you preach the truth, hallelujah? He that backbiteth not his, with his tongue. Don't, we need to be careful backbiting, amen? Right, Brother Joe? We got to watch out when we talk about people and places we go, amen? Amen. amen. We ought to watch that backbiting. Nor doth evil to his neighbor, our neighbor, whoever's around us, wherever you live, whatever you're able, don't do evil to him. If you have a problem with him, pray for him, amen? But don't, call, don't retaliate, don't come back against them, hallelujah? Then it said, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. And that, that's my last thought on that was. Verse 4, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, and he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Wouldn't you just fear the Lord, Amen. Amen. Jimmy, Cox, fear the Lord. Get some more fear in you. Amen. Is the more fear you, and it's, a, it's not us, the boogeyman type scared, the, 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 the robber that's coming to get you. It's a rever, reverential fear. It's a re, reverent fear towards God. Amen. But he honoreth them and feared the Lord. He that sweareth his own hurt and changeth not. Let your nay be nay and your yea be yea. Amen. Stick, if you don't stand for something, you're liable to fall for anything, amen? And I know people in the ministry, the young preachers that I've got going early in their, their days, and they'd start monkeying around, they'd start goof, they'd be going to this thing, they'd be checking out this thing, they'd be checking out that. Next thing you know, they got all kinds of thinking that's goofed up, amen? But why don't you stick to something that you really knew and you really believed and just stick to it, amen, would you? He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doth these things shall never be moved. Let me share this with you. And I had to study a little bit on that. Usury, I knew had something to do with Usury is when you give someone money and you expect interest back. We as Christians are not to do that. Amen? We're taught when you, know, you give or you lend, there's no interest on it. Hallelujah? Would you be thankful for that? He that doeth these things shall never be moved. So that's just our opening thing today. That's your one, you're getting three little sermons today. That's your first one. Who shall abide in that tabernacle? And he shall climb that holy hill. Who wants to climb that holy hill? Amen? Yeah, amen. Work with me a little bit today. Amen. That's good. Now, I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. 
I want you to go to Romans. I'm gonna, the, these next scriptures were given to me at my desk this morning at 7 o'clock. They're pretty, they're pretty common. Uh, most of us know them, but let's just get some help from them. Amen? A- encouragement from our Holy Hill. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. And this is the one I shared with Pete earlier that uh, this first verse in this section we're in um, <clears throat> has to do with what he was preaching today about Job in Sunday school. And by the way, that was, that was very good. And if you can make it, you know, I, I encourage you to try to make Sunday school if you can. I know you just do what you, you can to get here, but uh, you'll be blessed. Amen? Ro- Romans chapter 8, verse 18, and this is it. It says this. These are some encouraging verses, and it may not seem encouraging until I shed light on it. It says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the what? The glory which shall be revealed in us. There's coming a day, hallelujah, when the glory shall be revealed in you for some suffering that you went through. How many here suffered as a child in some way or fashion? Amen. Amen. And I see the man's. How many here ever had automobile problems and rent problems and eviction notices? Amen. Now we're hitting home. Amen. How many here have ever had a child that went wayward? Amen. How many here that maybe had a child or a loved one that passed away that we d- didn't expect right away? Amen. A lot of hands. That's the suffering I'm talking about. It said there in 18, in 18 it said, for I reckon. Ain't it something that he says, I reckon? He must be from my home state, Arkansas. Amen? Amen? He says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not to be worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You will, so you will reveal some glory. Amen? Why? Because you're a child of a king. Amen? And he wants to bestow favor upon you. He wants to exalt you. Exalt you. He wants to lift you up. Amen? Encouragement from God's holy word. Look up here to my left here, and let's say it together, but we all should know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Now with that thought, let's go over to this one. Come on to me, all he that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Heavy laden means burden. You've been hurt. Things are going, life has been tough. You've been in the battlefield. Amen? I'm here to tell you today, this next verse will help you tremendously, and you, most of you should know this verse. You're in Romans chapter 8, amen? Look at verse 28, verse 28, and it says this, and we know that all, what's it say, all? Put a little thought on that. All things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose, amen? All things work together. And you say, well, how is that, brother? I have a friend that she is supposed to be here today, her, her and her boyfriend, I, they're not here, they didn't show, but uh, she bought a car. If she was here, I probably wouldn't say this, but, but yeah, I might, because she wouldn't be mad at me for saying it. She bought a car, I helped her get this car, we got it on the road, and all of a sudden, like a day later, it's got some major problems. You know, negative, right? Not good. We prayed. I says, look, you got to trust the Lord. Just trust the Lord. Well, I don't know how it's going to work out, but just trust the Lord that this is going to work out. And it did, amen? And give her, give her some thought for that, that car. How about, how about this? All things work together for the good. You, lo- you lose a job. How many are, I've lost three or four jobs in my life. I, you might lose a job. But did God, <clears throat> didn't God give you another one? Yeah. Amen. Or a better one? You lost some income. And then all of a sudden you picked up a little more income. Or someone laid a blessing upon you. Amen. Did that help you today? Amen. For all things work together for those that love God. Do you love God? Let's pick it apart a minute. 28. 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And if you love God, you'll love to be in his house. You'll love to be out in the streets. You'll love to be doing things for him. And you may say, well, physically, sometimes I can't do that. I know people, I know a man that has a prison ministry from an 8 by 10 room in Shinnekinney, Pennsylvania. And that man, I think he disciples 80, 80 inmates from around, around the state or something like that. 
So you can do things. I mean, if you can't physically get out or you're hampered out or you're at home, and you can do something. You can pick up your phone and encourage somebody, amen, that's going through some tough times, amen? For him that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Wouldn't you be called today, amen, to something that you do at the church, something that you know that you're, you're doing what God wants you to do and you do it. Just keep doing it in the glory of God, amen? Next encouraging verse is Romans 8, 35. We're still in Romans. These are, these are, I've known these scriptures for years, and I'm sure many of you do too, but let's see if we can shed, shed some light on this. This is how much he loves us, amen? Romans 8, 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And when I say these things, you say no. Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? No. no. Or persecution? No. no. Or famine? No. no. Or nakedness? No. no. Or peril? No. Or sword? Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. He loves you that much. Amen. With that thought, look down at verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now, today I ask you a question. Did Jesus Christ save you? Are you saved by Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Everyone, does anyone know Jesus? All right, now here's the next question. Is he the Lord of your life? Amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Are you walking with Jesus every day? If not, get on board, amen? Get on that gospel bus and head for Zion, head for the pearly gates, amen? Get rolling. Are you, is, he, is he not only your Savior, but make him your Lord today? Maybe when we give the altar call, we'll talk about that a little bit. Our next verse of scripture is concerning the way to heaven. Again, it's a very familiar verse, but let's go there. John 14, if you would. And if you don't, if you don't want to go there, it's, you know, I'm, I'm the I am here, and it's my ministry to read them to you. John 14 says this. First, we're going to go 1 to 6. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Ain't that a nice promise? And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. And whither I go, he know, and the way he know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? And if you know this, and you've heard this for many, many years, if you're a senior saint, let's say it together. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus is the only way. Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus today. Maybe, maybe you're not saved today. I, I, I challenge you in love to give God your life and you, you become a Christian today. Born again of his spirit. Amen. And then you're, maybe you're here today and you're, you're, you need to rededicate. You kind of know what, what you've heard and you're listening to, but you need to rededicate your life to God and just give, give something back to him. And that know what he wants? He just wants you. He wants you. He just wants you to rededicate back to him. Amen. Then it says, let not your heart be troubled. In verse 14, whoever you're here today, let not your heart be troubled. And that's a, not a semicolon, it's a colon. It's two periods. If you got the right Bible, it's, it's properly marked punctually. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Does anyone here today have a heavy heart? Anyone here have some things going on that are, are bothering them? Amen. I've got three mountains that I'm battling right now. I've got a, I got a, a, a newer car that's got some issues that's driving me goofy. I got some relational things that are driving me goofy. And I have some physical things. I've been in pain for two weeks, but I'm not going to quit. Amen. Amen. Just keep going. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. Take everything to Jesus. Amen. These are Jesus' words. Our next scripture would be found in Jeremiah 29, if you would. The Lord wants the best for you. 
This is Jeremiah, who they, they often called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah 29. When you get there, say amen. amen. Thank you. 29, amen. 11 and 13. It says this, 11 through 13. And this is God talking to you, okay? Maybe talking to Israel, if we'd be totally correct here, but place yourself in God's thoughts today. And here's what he says. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearkeneth unto you. And he shall seek me and find me, when he shall search for me with all your heart. Amen? Amen. Search for him with all your heart. Not just a little bit of your heart. When you're having a spiritual time, spiritual time with God... <clears throat> Let the relationships go for a minute. Let the, the, the friendships go, <clears throat> the, ch the children, the job. You're alone with God. Search your heart and, and give him all your heart when you're having your intimacy with him. And I challenge you this. You need to have a secret place. Everyone, not just couples in here. Just Everyone needs to hear, have a secret place where they can get alone with God. I've got two places. One I share with people and one I would never tell nobody about two secret places where I can go and I can get alone with God and nobody knows where I am, where I'm going, and what I'm talking to him about. Because that's between me and God, amen? And you need that place too. You need a secret place. It may be in your kitchen. It may be in your car. It may be, it may be on a park bench. It may be on a bus stop. Or whatever it is. But I'm here to tell you today, find yourself a secret place, amen? And, and search for God with what? All your heart. Give him all you got. Talk to him. He should be your best friend. He should be one that you can confide. He's, he's confidential. He's there 24-7. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He knows everything you're thinking about, but he wants to have a relationship with you. So make him that today. You need Jesus as a relationship in, in, in a godly sense. Please don't take that as a wrong thinking, okay? But you, you need to have a friend like Jesus, amen? Because he'll never leave thee and he'll never forsake thee. Hallelujah. Our next verse of scripture is in Isaiah, Isaiah uh, chapter 40. So just turn to your left in your Bible. Go to your left. Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, Isaiah chapter 40. Okay, amen. Isaiah 40, let me know when you're there. Isaiah 40 says this, verses uh, 28 to 39 say this. Has thou not known... Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And then that wonderful word in the King James Bible in verse 31 says, but. Can you say but? But. And here's what, he, here's what God says. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. So keep walking. Amen. Get running. Amen. Get like the eagles. Amen. Fly and soar high. Take your life upon a further realm. Get on top of that holy hill, would you? Amen. Then our next scripture would be 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 2. 1 Corinthians, back to the New Testament. 1, 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. And again, let me know when you're there. Amen. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse Verse 9. I want you to see 9. There's a lot. I preach this. I have a, a Saturday fellowship that I preach in DPU, and I, I kind of preached this chapter yesterday, but this was the last verse I think I ended up with. But I say, so you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says this, but as it is written, amen, 
But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen? Amen. Your eyes, your ears, my ears in the spring hear Tweety birds. I hear birds outside my, 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 uh, my bedroom. Matter of fact, I've been here in the summer, and I've heard birds up in this area, the, 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 up here. There's bird nests up here in this roof or something. So your ears hear nice things. I hear a train whistle. I love, woo, woo, woo. I like that train whistle. My ears hear it, amen? And your eye, how about your eyes? They see a pretty, pretty piece of water or a waterfall or something. Your eyes see something beautiful. What about your heart? Enter into the heart of the man. What's that been in your heart? You know, there's a good treasure. Jesus says in the gospel, there's a good treasure of the heart, and there's also a negative treasure of the heart. But in your good treasure of the heart, the things that were good for you, God's even got it better. He's even got it better. Take one more look at that before we move on. It says, But as is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him again, loving God. Getting to know God more intimately and becoming a real good relationship with him. Amen. Entered into the heart of man. Let you, ha- let you work with the right heart today. Amen. Seek ye the Lord while he is near. His hand is not shortened that he cannot save. His hand's not short. He can reach out and pour your right to salvation. How about when you're in the storms of life and you're walking on the water like Peter and all of a sudden you begin to sink and immediately he grabs hold of you. Amen? Ain't that good? Amen. I like that. Because the storms of life enter uh, my, my area quite a well, quite a bit. Now we're going to start heading this up. 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. And again, these are, these are familiar. If you've been around church, especially around Pete, Pastor Pete, you have heard these scriptures before. Amen? But we're going to read them for those that maybe don't get there. First, 2 Peter <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 9. says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should what? Come to repentance. He's not willing that any should perish. I don't know who's saved here today. Only you and God really know who's saved. But I'm here to tell you that there's somebody here. I know there's more than one or two or three people that need to rededicate their life to Jesus Christ today. And get back on fire for God. Amen. Would you, would you agree with that? Amen. There's a few hands went up. Let's move on again. Uh, 2 Corinthians. Go back to Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6. You there? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that he receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation I have succored thee. That means helped thee. Behold, now, let's read it together. Now is the accepted, accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Let's go, let's go one, more, one more spot. Let's go to Revelation These are 7 o'clock this morning, fresh out of bed. These verses, they just came to me. And this is the last one we, we, well, the last one we may look up together. All right, Revelation, Revelation 21, 21, verse 27. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. It's the last verse of the chapter. Amen, we looking, we there? And there shall be no wise enter in anything that defileth, neither worketh abomination, or maketh a lie. But they which are written in what? The Lamb's Book of Life. I'm here to tell you today. February 20th, 1984, I'm going into my 36th year. I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And he took his pen, and he dabbed it in the blood he had. And he wrote in his book, it's the Lamb's Book of Life. Other places it says the Book of Life, which is okay, But this is the Lamb's Book of Life. The Lamb I'm telling you about is Jesus. Amen. And he takes that pen and he writes in there, 
your name, Jimmy Cox, saved, my child, a child of the king. He wrote it in the book. How about you today? Is there a better day coming when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, to be born again of his spirit, where he could, I don't know all your names, but I'll just pick on a couple of you. Uh, he, he took his spiritual pen and he dabbled it in a little blood. And he wrote your name in that book. He, Brother Joe, he gets Brother Joe's name in that book. And I think it was Brother Byron, amen? He gets his name in the book. And the other ones that know Jesus, you know for sure that you know Jesus for sure that he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. Because there's coming a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he wants you to know him. Amen. He is not a beat em up God. He's a good God. He's a God that will help you get through the times and the trials and the storms of life. He wants to have that personal relationship with you. Amen. Romans, you don't have to go there, but because i got only got a few minutes here. Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were lying, he died for us. When we were stealing, he died for us. When we were drugging, he died for us. When we were smoking, he died for us. I'm here to tell you today, Keep your life as clean and pure as you can, amen? We may not be perfect, but start exercising your spiritual gifts. If you like to evangelize, get out and evangelize with Brother Pete, Pastor Pete. I'm here to tell you today, if you like to do something for God, find out what it is and just start doing it. Get busy for God. And do it from the realms of inside the church house. There are different ministries in the church house that you can work with. And stay in that realm, hallelujah. <coughs> And then it goes on to say that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, with the mouth, salvation, amen. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Woo! Amen. Whosoever, whatever your name is, whosoever, whatever that name is, you could call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Who would want that today? Amen. Amen. I see that hand. Another hand. Another hand. Another hand. Amen. Amen. Who here would want to rededicate their life to God? Rededication. Just get back on track with God. Get coming to church again. Just get plugged in. I saw them hands. Many hands. Many thoughts. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have a word of prayer. A lot of people say, well, you just gave them the Romans road and you told them a prayer. Yeah, amen. That's how I got saved. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall get saved. So you call on him. You ain't no bird. You ain't going to go, call, call, call. No, you ain't going to do that. You're going to talk to him and ask him into your heart and your life. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall we say, would you come? Come forward. Join me. Come. Come. Come forward. If you do, don't let the old devil hold you back no more. Come forward and ask Jesus into your life. If you're here today and you want to rededicate, you want to rededicate your life to God, you want to get back on track, I need help. The storms of life are rough. It's not easy. God, would you come? Would you come for a prayer of rededication? Would you come? Would you come? Who will step out? Come on, come on. Come on, who would come? Come on. Who needs God? Would you come? We just got a couple minutes yet. Come on, who would come? Don't hold back no more. You need God. I don't really know why you're coming, and I don't have to know. That's what's so nice about Christianity. You don't have to know. You don't even have to come to me. Just go to the altar and pry your out. To, but I want to pray with you. What's your name? Do you want to trust the Lord as Savior? You know, Jason? You know. Get back. Pray, pray, pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Would you come? Come. Come on, don't hold back. This brother told me he had a hard time getting going this morning, but look at him, he's finding his way to that altar. If he can find, how about somebody else? Can someone else come? How about you? You, you said you wanted to come. Would you come? I've walked the altar a lot of times. Would you come? Anyone else? You've been here a long time. You've heard the preaching. You've been, you know Pastor Pete. You know you're in a place that loves and cares about you. Would you come to the altar today? Would you give your life back to God? Rededicate your life to God. You need the rededication. Get that fire back in you and that spirit in you. And I'm going to tone down here. I'm going to tone down here in a minute and leave you have time with God. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this service. In Jesus' name, amen.